let's jump into it. Uh, disclaimer, we've all seen that. So uh, December of this year, uh, transformational uh, acquisition announced uh, for Alpha Energy. Uh, we propose to acquire uh, both Latitude Uranium and 92 Energy. And what that does on a pro forma basis in our view, it set, sets up an unparalleled uh, amount of exposure to the exploration space in the uranium industry. Uh, on a pro forma basis, we'll have over 7 million acres of exploration property across three different uh, jurisdictions in Canada, that being the um, obvious one, uh, obviously the Athabasca Basin, uh, with a substantial land position in the Athabasca Basin of 3.8 million acres, uh, moving up into the Thelon Basin, which um, if, if people were around for the last uh, uranium market, um, people would understand the, the potential in the Thelon Basin. There's a Kigavik deposit that's right there. It has 127 million pounds. It's owned by Urano, uh, just on that trend. It, it is a uh, direct analog to the Athabasca Basin, however, uh, is significantly underexplored. And so the opportunity there in our mind is, is material. Uh, so that's uh, from an exploration perspective. And then, you know, of note, part of our portfolio previously that obviously continues is a uh, um, exposure to next gen energy and uh, a couple projects within Tim's portfolio, within ISO Energy's portfolio. Uh, and that's a 10% carried interest uh, that, you know, carries right through to a uh, feasibility level stage or bank bankable feasibility level stage, at which point it would then convert to either a particip participatory interest uh, or convert to a uh, NSR. So exposure to next gen energies exploration portfolio um, and, and the good work that they're planning to do there, not only last year, but this year. Uh, we, we have a post-discovery project um, in the Athabasca Basin, that's a GMZ zone. Uh, I think uh, Keith probably noted uh, that they have a project on trend of that. that, that's a GMZ zone. It's a new, newly discovered uh, mineralized basement, mineralized corridor uh, within the Athabasca Basin. And so we intend to invest heavily and leverage that this year. And then, you know, a very key part of the acquisition uh, was the Angulac project that came within LUR's portfolio. That's a 43 million pound uh, historic resource at the grade of 0.69%, one of the highest grade resources outside of the Athabasca Basin itself. Um, so, you know, importantly, we, we, we built a portfolio, an exploration portfolio that spans the entirety of the risk curve within the exploration space, right? from greenfields exploration, dominant land position from that perspective, right through to uh, resources in the ground. And, and we intend to invest along that exploration risk curve in 2024. Um, and that's supported by uh, a pro forma cash balance of about $65 million. So you take, combine the cash from all three companies, um, and combine that with the uh, the capital raise that we did, that we announced and executed um, in parallel with the with the capital raise, and we're very well financed. So, as I mentioned, you know the company on a pro forma basis represents, an, in our view, um, unmatched uh, exploration torque and exploration exposure in in one company across Canada's best uranium jurisdictions. Um, we are fully funded, and we have a very strong team. Uh, you know, I, I think everyone everyone always talks about the strength of the team and Gwen mentioned that, that it's important uh, in the cycle and, and I don't disagree. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I came up through Chemical Corporation uh, as a chief geologist at one of their mines after being an explorationist and then spent a lot of time with Next Gen Energy developing the Rook One project. Uh, Doug Engdahl, uh, he's a managing director for us. Um, he, he's a similar experience in the uranium space. Uh, kind of throughout, our, our vice president of exploration actually made the discovery of the uh, of the GMZ zone for 92 Energy. So, uh, you know, very strong team from a technical perspective, very strong team from a capital markets perspective as well as evidenced by, you know, the capital that we've been able to raise and support the, support the deal to date. So on a pro forma basis, um, you know, this, the, the proposed transactions were valued at uh, our, our value uh, in which we're issuing shares at is at a dollar. So what we're looking at here at, uh, uh, on the cap table is based off that dollar valuation. So on a pro forma basis, we're looking at an indicative market cap of about $270 million. You know, we're trading at about $1.30 right now. So that's uh, well over three, you know, looking at over $300 million market cap. Uh, to date, very tight share structure um, on the uh, on the Atha side, uh, strongly institutionally supported, strongly strong insider support. Um, we're a new story. Started, we were listed on April eleventh uh, of twenty twenty three, um, and, and so we we know where we know where the shares are at. We know where the stocks at, um, and we're 
very well positioned moving forward. I kind of got into our people already, so I'll move through this. Um, now, a bit on the jurisdictions. Uh, the Athabasca Basin, we're all familiar with that. We, we, have, we have land in every uh, past producing, emerging producing, um, and historic producing area of the Athabasca. Uh, throughout the course of 2023, 20, uh, we invested heavily in, in our land position. We did the largest ever multi-platform EM survey ever conducted in the basin. We flew it over about 2.1 million acres. Uh, we had seven helicopters in the sky at one time, and the whole idea there is to mature um, our asset base and mature our portfolio of exploration projects, which we're well underway of doing. Uh, the Thelon Basin took a very large land position in the Thelon Basin. I, I touched briefly on that already. Um, and then we also have the Central Mineral Wealth Projects. Now, I'll just touch on Angulac very quickly. That's, a, uh, that's an anchor within our exploration portfolio. 43.3 uh, uh, million pound uh, resource at an average grade of 0.69%. Now, w when we're looking at our acquisition strategy, a key part of that strategy was looking at assets that we believed had significant upside potential. Uh, that was a cornerstone to what we're doing. We believe we have that within Angulac and we also have that within the GMZ project. Now, I've spent a lot of time developing uh, basement hosted uranium resources right from Eagle Point to Arrow. Uh, and when I see the potential within the footprint of this deposit, it's significant. Um, you know, I, I'm a geologist, so you can look at the technical side of it, but you can also look at the past performance. Uh, this resource, the maiden resource, was 14 million pounds. They put another year of drilling into it. The resource in increased in size and scale to, 20, or to uh, 27 million pounds. One more year of drilling increased to 43 million pounds. Okay, so you look at the technical targets and the, and the growth potential from a technical perspective, but you also look at the performance of the resource, and it's still in a very steep part of that resource growth curve. Um, and so we're going to be investing heavily there in 2024, 20, uh, and we're going to uh, seek to expand uh, the deposit itself, and then uh, leverage the exploration uh, potential um, adjacent to the. Uh, deposit as well. GMZ, uh, very few basement hosted uh, uranium corridors in the Athabasca Basin. The two most prolific would be the Rabbit Lake Corridor, which has produced over 200 million pounds of uranium mineralization, and obviously the Patterson Lake Corridor, uh, which hosts the uh, Triple R Aero Spitfire deposits, etc. Uh, I had the opportunity to go to site, obviously, and see the core from GMZ. And the thing that struck me was uh, the Direct analogy be that I see in terms of the, the mineralization, the alteration, the structural setting uh, of the mineralization at GMZ as it relates to the analogous Rabbit Lake Corridor. And so in 2024, uh, we're going to do very similar things to what we're planning at Angulac. We're going to expand the zone of mineralization, the GMZ zone. Um, and uh, we're also going to explore along that GMZ corridor, which is very much underexplored as you go further to the north. Uh, th that's typical with these basement hosted systems where you have, um, you know, multiple deposits um, along, a, along a mineralized structural corridor. Uh, there's about a, a kilometer of mineralization here between uh, baseload energy to the south of us and GMZ. Uh, we intend to continue to work at GMZ, but also leverage the exploration potential as we go further to the north on this corridor. We've, we, we think this is a fantastic opportunity in the basin. And it gets to our, the entirety of our land position. Uh, everything in green there uh, is Atha. Um, and you know what we're doing, I think I mentioned the scope and scale of the EM survey that we did this year. What that's doing is allowing us to systematically select our highest priority targets out of the largest land position in the basin by far. Um, and in doing so, then we will continue to advance those priority targets uh, and priority properties. But um, on, on the flip side of that, uh, I think as Gwen mentioned, it, you know, there was a lot of companies uh, in the last cycle that were working in the basin, probably about 10 times as many as there is today. Uh, and, and that interest is returning, and there's a lot of companies that are looking for, uh, you know, to position themselves with exploration projects within the basin. So, you know, opportunity for us then is, uh, you know, the, the projects that might end up being non-core for us. Uh, represent a very good opportunity for uh, farm out agreements and for others to participate in this uranium market. The Thelon Basin, uh, I, I think this is, in my view, this is one of the opportunities within the, uh, this uranium cycle. Uh, 
I view it as being analogous to the Athabasca Basin um, circa 1970. Um, and, and what I mean by that is there's been exploration and discoveries made, uh, and, and that's the Kigivik uh, project, Kigivik deposits, uh, as well as along a fertile corridor there. But as you move into the basin itself, the amount of exploration that's been done there has been very limited. Um, so, you know, so I view Kigavik as being analogous to, say, Rabbit Lake or Key Lake, and the opportunity to move undercover and explore um, in a fertile uh, basin that is underexplored, that has the potential to host uh, very high-grade, unconformity-associated uranium deposits is an extremely compelling opportunity for us. <laughs> Carried interest, I already mentioned that. So what, what we're doing is investing along the entirety of a risk curve, right from uh, resource expansion, post-discovery projects, um, an unprecedented amount of exploration exposure through a greenfields land position, um, and we're well-funded and we're, we're, we're investing along the entirety of that curve in 2024. Uh, and ultimately, that's a growth strategy. You know, Ath is a company that was built for growth uh, in this uranium market. It was built for growth. It was built at, it was built to operate at scale, and that's exactly what we're doing. And you think about the growth pillars, and those come through investing in our asset base uh, that we have and that we acquired. Uh, it comes from exposure to next gens, exploration activities through a 10% carried interest, and it comes from merger and acquisition, which we've just completed. Uh, but we intend to continue to look at uh, value, I think Tim used, used maybe my line, or I'm using Tim's line, a value accretive opportunities is something that we, we continue to look at based off the platform that we've built to date. So we're, we're extremely uh, excited. We're going to be investing heavily uh, in 2024, and I can't, you know, I can't think of a better time uh, ever to be investing in uranium exploration um, across the best jurisdictions.